Hello, photographers. Direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Sony A7 III. Now, the very first thing you need to do is charge your battery. And that's a little unintuitive with the Sony a7 III because the Sony a7 III doesn't come with a battery charger for its battery. Instead, how you charge your battery is putting the battery in the camera. And to open the battery door on the bottom, there's a little toggle switch. And this is a fixed switch, so you have to switch it back and forth in order to open the battery door. And then you slip the battery in. And the battery is shaped with a rounded edge, so it's really easy to tell which way it goes in. If you are wondering, the contact points go towards the outside of the camera. And there's a little blue switchy thing on the side here that locks the battery in place. So I like to take my batteries and press them up against the little switch thing to move it out of the way when I slide them in. And then close the battery door, but you have to switch that switch, otherwise the battery door just keeps flopping open. So lock that baby back up and your battery's in. Now, in order to charge it, you come over to the other side of the camera and there's two little rubber doors covering some ports on the camera. And if you move the bottom door, you'll see two ports. So the bottom port says multi. That uses the old, which is a little disappointing, USB B, mini B type or whatever, it's the one that looks like this. Sony sends you a cable and a wall ward adapter for charging it, but you could use anything basically. So once you have your battery charged, you're ready to start shooting. Now you have to put your lens on your camera and on the bottom of the camera is the lens release button. And what you do is you press that and then twist the cap towards the button, that would be, if you're looking at it, you would twist it towards the left to remove that. So I'm gonna set this down. I have the Sony 24-70 f4 lens. To put the lens on, you're gonna remove the back cap. Now, if you look at the side of the lens, you'll notice that there's a little white dot on the lens. And if you look at the front of the camera, you'll also notice there's a little white dot and in order to put the lens on the camera, you want to align those two dots. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to align the dot on the lens with the dot on the camera, and that allows the lens to slip into place. And then you twist it to the right in order to lock it. So now my lens is in place. I'm gonna take off my lens cap. Now we can turn on the camera. And when you turn on the camera, the very first thing you have to do is your basic setup. And I'm going to choose my language, which of course for me is English. And I'm going to enter to set the date and time. And my time zone is Chicago, Mexico City. So you just use, on the back of the camera here, you have this dial right here, which is also a set of buttons up, down, left, and right. And I'm using that dial to navigate through these options. So if I press the left button, it moves me over to Chicago, Mexico City, and I can choose that time zone. Daylight savings off, date time not set. Let's set that to PM. And then on the back of the camera, in the middle of that dial is a button. You press that to set that in. So now we have everything set. I'm gonna move down to enter and lock that in. We're going to hit okay. We're getting an advertisement on our camera, which is sort of obnoxious. So what we're going to do is on the back of the camera, there's this menu button. And when you press that button, that takes you into the menu. So we start on camera menu one, page one with the file format. And by default, the file format is set to JPEG. And you can go in here and you can choose if you wanna capture as JPEG, raw and JPEG, or just raw. Now, I personally always capture everything in RAW. If you've never shot in RAW and you don't know what RAW is, I recommend you start with JPEG and learn about RAW and try it out later. So I'm going to set mine to RAW plus JPEG because we're going to be looking at some other settings that I want you to see. So we're going to set that and then we're going to move down here to RAW file type. The RAW file type option here is compressed versus uncompressed. And if you want the absolute maximum possible quality you can get out of your camera and out of your photos, then you're gonna to wanna to change this from compressed to uncompressed. And then if you go down to JPEG quality, you have a similar set of options. 
By default, it's set to fine. If you're capturing in JPEG, I highly, highly recommend extra fine. You want as much data as possible. And the same thing goes with the JPEG image size. It is far, far better to capture a larger megapixel image. The default here is 24 megapixels than it is to capture a small image because you can always take a larger image and shrink it down smaller, but it is much more difficult to take a smaller image and enlarge it and maintain the quality level. So if you're capturing in JPEG, set this to large. So that's page one. Now let's move over to camera page one, page two. Then we go over to the next page. And this page, we don't wanna change anything either. The only one you might change when shooting is your drive mode, but it's actually easier to change your drive mode from the quick menu, which I'll show you how to access later. So now we're gonna move over to the next page and we're going to skip this page as well. And now we're on page five. And on page five, we do wanna take a look at some of these options. The first is focus mode. Now your focus mode is automatically set to this automatic AF. And what this does is the camera tries to determine whether you're taking a photograph of a moving subject or a still subject, and then smartly decide if it should continuously focus to try to keep focus on the subject as it moves around, or just focus and lock and stay locked. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I don't really like it when the camera makes decisions for me, so I don't use this mode. What I would recommend is using the AFS mode, which is the standard mode you use when you're taking photos. And what that means is when you half press your shutter button down, the camera's going to get a focus lock and keep that focus lock as long as you're pressing the shutter button down. You can always change this later using the quick menu, which I'll show, again, I'll show you how to access later. So now, in the menu, priority set in AFS and AFC. And these you should change because this changes how the camera responds when it is attempting to get focus and you are attempting to take a picture. Where you're trying to take a picture of something and one of two things happens. Either A, you it doesn't take a picture because it hasn't locked focus on the subject, or it takes a picture, but the picture is out of focus because the camera hadn't focused yet. Well, Sony allows you to tell the camera if you want it to focus and make sure it has focus before it takes a picture, or if you are okay with it sometimes missing focus and you'd rather it take the picture when you press the button all the way down to take the photo. By default, it's set to balanced emphasis, which means the camera is going to decide for you if it should let you take the picture based on whether or not it has focus and whether or not it thinks it's important. I don't like that kind of thing. Again, if you choose AF, then the camera will not allow you to take a photograph unless it has obtained a focus lock. And if you don't want that to happen, if you want it to take a picture, even if the focus might be off, then you would set it to release, which means that no matter what, when you half press that shutter button, if the camera hasn't focused and you press that button down all the way, it's going to take the photo. So you would choose what you want. I would choose AF because I prefer to have a focus lock. Now this is for AFS, which is the single shot mode. And you need to set the same thing with AFC so that it knows how to respond in that mode as well. And in that mode, I would also set it to AF myself, but you could set it, again, if you wanted to, to release mode, because let's say you're taking some action photos and you wanna prioritize getting the photo even if the focus might be off a little bit, then maybe instead you set it to release to make sure that you capture that moment when you wanna capture it. The next option here is the focus area. And what I recommend you do is leave this to wide if you're just going to be doing general shooting. However, there are a couple of other options that are worth taking a look at. And the ones that I recommend looking at are this flexible spot and expanded flexible spot. So if you're not just going to use the wide area, which is the default, then I recommend you go down to flexible spot expanded, which is right here. And what that allows you to do is choose your focus point. So if I hit to confirm that, you'll notice that there is a focus point in the middle of the frame right now. And that is the focus point that the camera is going to use to focus. And on the back of the camera, there's a little joystick right here. And if I move this joystick around, you'll see my focus point is moving around. And this allows me to put 
the focus point exactly where I want it in the frame so that exactly what I want the camera to focus on is what it focuses on. And this is great when you're taking portraits or you're taking macro photos or other things like that. I use this mode almost exclusively. The only time I take it off this mode is when I'm shooting action. The rest of the settings here we're gonna leave alone and we're gonna move on to the next. And on this page, we're also going to leave most stuff alone, but we're going to take a look at the face and eye autofocus. By default, your face and eye autofocus is on. And what that means is the camera is always going to be looking for a face and choosing to focus on the face and eye if it finds it. If you don't shoot a lot of portraits, it's actually a good idea to turn this off. You can always easily turn it back on either by going into the menu and returning to this page and turning it on, or you can actually assign a custom button. So if we go back to the menu, for now we'll just leave that on have your subject detection set to human. They also have an animal option. And then the rest of this stuff we're gonna leave alone. Now we're gonna move over to the next page. We're also going to leave alone. And we're going to leave everything alone on this page. And on this page, we're gonna make some settings. By default, your camera is set to auto ISO. And what that means is the camera is going to choose the ISO for you. And if you want that, that's fine. But if you're trying to learn how to shoot in manual mode and understand how your camera works and how to control your camera, I recommend you turn this off and you set your own ISO setting. Now you actually want to set your ISO from a different place because going into your menu to change your ISO is not a good idea. For now, let's just take it off of auto by setting it to ISO uh, 100. This next option here is the ISO auto minimum shutter speed option. Now, this option works in conjunction with your auto ISO function. And one of the important things to understand is that this only works when you're using program auto or aperture priority mode. What this is, is a bunch of automatic functions of the camera coming together to try to be smart and to work for you. Let me explain a hypothetical situation so that you can understand how this works. Let's say you're shooting in aperture priority mode. And in aperture priority mode, you control the aperture and the camera controls the shutter speed. Now let's also say you have auto ISO turned on, which means you control the aperture, the camera controls both the shutter speed and the ISO. And let's say you're taking some photographs of a sunset. And as the sun's going down, you're noticing that your shutter speed keeps getting longer and longer. When you started taking photos, you were getting shutter speeds of 1 250th of a second. And then as the sun started going down, they dropped down to 1 100th of a second. And as the sun kept going down, the shutter speed kept dropping. And all of a sudden you notice that your shutter speed was at 1 10th of a second. And as you're taking the photos, you're noticing that they're blurry because you're hand holding them. And at 1 10th of a second, you get some motion blur in there. What this auto ISO minimum shutter speed function does, it's a mouthful, is it lets you tell the camera, if you reach this shutter speed, stop there and don't go any slower and instead increase the ISO to make any compensations for exposure. So in that hypothetical scenario, you could say, I want my threshold for the shutter speed set to 1 60th of a second so that as the sun goes down, my shutter speed will never be slower than 1 60th of a second, meaning you can safely hand hold the camera and take photographs. So that's what it does. Now let me explain the options for you. If you hit the center button on the back of the camera to go into the options, you've got standard and then you have 1 8,000th, 1 4,000th, blah, 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 all the way through, right? So standard is the camera deciding for you. It's gonna decide what shutter speed should I stop at? Probably 1 60th would be my guess. Or it's going to look at the lens you're using and decide based on the lens and the zoom. Because the lens you're using will actually affect the shutter speed you can safely handhold at. So if you use standard, the camera's going to decide for you. I don't like that. Again, I don't like when the camera decides things for me. If you want to use that, that's fine. Otherwise, you can actually set the exact shutter speed you want. I mentioned 1 60th of a second. Well, here it is right here. All right, so let's go back into the menu 
and we're going to take a look at the metering mode quickly. This is actually better access from the quick menu. So once again, we're going to just briefly cover the options here and then we'll go back and look at the rest of them. So multi is the default. That's the auto mode of metering modes. I prefer myself spot metering, which is where there is a single spot and the camera meters off of only that spot. Now I'm a portrait photographer and that's part of why I like spot metering. If you shoot landscapes, multi is great. So we'll go back into the menu and we're going to skip this. We're going to move over to the next page. And on this one, we're going to look at the spot metering point. Now, the reason I chose spot is not just because I use it, but also because you can choose whether or not the spot metering point is locked to the center focus point on the camera, or if it moves with the focus point, if you're using either one of the flexible focus point options, which I said earlier. So we're going to go ahead into this and we're gonna put focus point link on. So I'm gonna half press the shutter button and you see where my focus point is over here? The camera is metering off of that spot. That's my router. If I move it up here, it's going to meter off of my microphone. If I move my focus point over here, it's going to meter off of my monitor. So you can see how it changes the exposure preview based on where I move the focus point because it's metering off of that point. If you are unsure of what to do, choose the multi-metering mode. The rest of this we're gonna leave alone and we're gonna move on to the next page. We're gonna leave all of this alone and we're gonna move on to the next page. And by default, your white balance is set to auto. That's much easier change from your quick menu. So we're not gonna change that from here. And the rest of this stuff we're gonna leave alone as well. However, the creative style is something I wanna point out real quick. Now, if you chose to shoot your photos in RAW, a question I get from tons of people is how come when I take pictures in RAW, they look great on the camera, but then when I bring them into Lightroom or whatever software you happen to use, they look dull and flat and terrible. In a nutshell, the reason for that is when you see a preview on your camera, you're actually looking at a JPEG that's been edited by the camera. It's been sharpened, it's had saturation levels boosted, it's, it's had other stuff done to it. And when you load that RAW file into your editor of choice, there's a different profile applied to that RAW file that doesn't have those settings applied to it. So it often looks different. If you want a more realistic preview of what your RAW file is going to look like, then you're gonna to wanna to change this creative style from standard to the neutral. And it's still not going to be a perfect match. I wanna make that clear. But this is going to give you at least a better idea of what the raw file will actually look like when you load it up into your editor. All right, let's go back into the menu and we're going to skip the next to the next page. And we're not gonna change anything here. And we're gonna to go to the next page. We're not changing anything here. All right, here we're into the movie mode and we're not worried about movie mode stuff here. We're just doing photo setup. Now we are going to skip to page four of this camera menu because there is something I wanna point out here, which is release without lens and release without card. Both of these are set to enable. And what that means is I can take a picture even if there's no lens on the camera and I can take a picture even if there are no memory cards in the camera. Now I currently have no memory cards in the camera and as you'll see it allowed me to take a photograph. If you want a reminder that you don't have a memory card in there by not being able to take a photograph then what you can do is set release without card to disable and now you'll see I'll get a focus lock but I try to take a photograph and it tells me there's no memory card. All right, so let's go back into the menu. Steady shot is the camera's in body image stabilization set to on by default, leave it there. Now we're gonna move over to page eight where we have custom keys. Now I talked about using a one of the buttons to set whether or not you have eye detect focus on or off. And this is where you could do that. So you have custom keys for photo, custom keys for video, and custom keys for playback. We're focusing on custom keys for photo. And if we go in here, you've got control wheel, custom button one, which is set to white balance, custom button two, which is set to focus area, custom button three, which is set to focus mode, and finally custom button four, which is touch operation selection. I'm going to go to custom button four, which is actually, it doubles as the trash button on the back of the camera down here. And we're gonna change that to I autofocus on and off. So now we gotta find it. So now when I press that button, I can turn face and eye priority off. All right, now we're gonna jump all the way over 
to the setup menu over here. We're going to setup menu page two. And the first thing I wanna point out is the power save start time. This is how long before the camera will turn itself off. This is your preference, there's no right answer here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to five minutes for myself. And then down here is whether or not you can operate the camera using the camera's touch screen. By default, the touch screen is turned off. If you wanna turn that on, you can do that right here. We're gonna skip this page and we're going to skip this page. We're gonna skip this page as well. And on this page, we're looking at the record media settings. This camera has two SD card slots, which means you can tell the camera how to send files to those cards. So if you go into here, you can say prioritize recording media, slot one or slot two, which means this is where it's going to go by default. If you're only using one card, you're gonna put it in slot one because that's the default slot. Now, recording mode is standard. And here, what you can do now is set those different options. I'd recommend, at the very least, simultaneous. If you are shooting something that's important, have two cards so that one of those cards is a backup. And if you shoot RAW and JPEG, sorting them into two different cards is really, really nice as well. So those are the settings that I recommend you start with to get your camera ready for you and set up for you to start taking photos and using it. Now, I mentioned the quick menu a few times. So we're gonna take a look at that quick menu now. And the quick menu is something that you can access at any time by pressing this function button that you see right here on the back of the camera while you're in a normal shooting mode. So when you press that button, it's going to bring up this menu with a bunch of different options on there. And many of these are options that we looked at in the deeper menus of the camera, but this is just a quicker, faster way to get to them. So the first option is the drive mode, and you can change this one of two ways. The first way you can change it is just cycling through the options by spinning this control dial here on the back of the camera. To me, that's the best way to do it. However, you can also press the center button to bring up the menu and use the up and down arrow or the scroll wheel to go through those different options. So let's just go back to single shot, which is the default. The thing that I don't like about using this center button is that when you're done, it takes you out. And maybe you wanna change a few things, which means you wanna be able to go through and change another one after you're done. So let's go back and let's just go through each one of these options. You have your drive mode, which we already covered. We have your focus mode. We have the focus area and then you have exposure compensation. Now exposure compensation only works if you're using program auto, aperture priority, or shutter priority mode. Next is your ISO, and then your metering mode is flash mode, which we don't need to worry about because there's no flash on the camera. Flash exposure compensation, also didn't need to worry about this. Your white balance setting. Then here you have the creative style, which we set earlier in the menu. And then the prioritize media. This is your memory card option. So you can change that quickly from here as well. And then finally, you have the shooting mode. It's just showing you that information there. It's not something you can actually change here. And then to dismiss that menu, you can just half press the shutter button or you can press the menu button to make it go away. Okay, so that's the setup guide for the Sony a7 III. If you have questions about the a7 III, let me know in the comments. I've got a number of other videos showing you how to set up and use the a7 III. They're all in playlist linked up here in the doobly-doo and down in the other doobly-doo. If you wanna do that YouTube bullshit to help me out, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, take some damn photos.